Hello, Black Healing Matters family. This is Danielle here with yet another episode of the Black Healing Matters podcast, where we offer you ideas to hopefully move you one step closer to your healing. And today I hope is no different because you know it is Tuesday. Know thy history Tuesday, that is. What are we talking about today? We're talking about the top five scholars of Timbuktu. I'm also super excited today because I am on my way to Singapore today for the Tony Robbins Unleashing the Power Within event. If you ever heard of this event before, you've probably seen that uh, Oprah Winfrey did the the fire walk, you know, walking on coals. So I'm going to do that and I'll let you guys know how it goes. But for the next several days, actually for about the next week, I have pre-recorded these uh, episodes so that I'm able to focus on all the good stuff that I paid for (laughs) when I go see Tony Robbins in person live in Singapore. So I'll be there in Singapore for five days. And uh, like I said, I will be pre-recording the episodes, but hopefully I'll get to drop in and, you know, maybe share some of the nuggets, great tips and experiences that I have when I'm there uh, at in Singapore at the Unleashing the Power Within event with you while I'm there. So you may hear a little special something, something from me, um, this podcast here or there over the next few days, because like I said, I will be at the event and have really good seats too. I'm like right in front of the stage. So I'm so excited. Uh, I've been looking forward to this for months. So having said that black healing matters family today, we are going to talk about, as I mentioned, the top five scholars of Timbuktu. Now we've talked about Timbuktu being one of the most influential, uh, trade centers in all of West Africa during its time. It has come up during several, um, several different talks about different empires, especially I believe it was the Songhai Empire. And so today we are going to uh, listen to yet another video by uh, shout outs to the home team history on YouTube. We're going to listen to his video. It's about 10 minutes long. So sit back, relax and enjoy. And I hope to hear from you soon. Tell me about what you think about this this topic. Um, hopefully you enjoy it as much as I did, because honestly, I didn't know the names of any scholars from Timbuktu. I just kind of knew that there were a lot of them. So hopefully we shed some light on that again today on Know That History Tuesday. The idea and the theme, the goal is to get the warm and fuzzies, you know, to feel that sense of cultural pride that comes along with knowing that our people were great and not just great at basketball, not just great at music, which is great, but great at thinking. These are men of thinking. And in Timbuktu, they were very highly regarded. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the home team history channel, top five scholars of Timbuktu. Have a wonderful day. Stay blessed. And as always, Black Healing Matters. There are so many occasions on which we speak on the intellectual legacy of Africans, right? Like we speak on Africans and how their intellect influenced the world and how their scholars were essentially second to none. This is true, especially when the legendary city of Timbuktu is mentioned. The problem is, though, that I see most people within the African diaspora, especially, can't seem to name one African scholar. Today, we're going to change that. African world, it's your boy Home Team here. I'm back at it with another video of African history, culture, and worldview. And today we're going to talk about the top five West African scholars of Timbuktu. Now, every major African city, you know, had its scholars, Timbuktu just being world renowned. And since it was so highly praised, its scholars were as well. Timbuktu, in all honesty, is probably the most legendary city in all of Africa, outshining Cairo and even other Eastern African empires and cities. But before I get into the top five, we must pay our respects to the legendary history of Timbuktu. Timbuktu is believed to have been founded around 1100 by a woman named Tin Habutu. She is believed to have possibly been a slave of the Tuareg. The Tuareg inhabited the region as a seasonal settlement. And because Tin Habutu was essentially stationed at the well watching the goods of the Tuareg, they called the region Timbuktu. 
Now, Timbuktu did not become what it was today until African architects, most likely from Jenin, bringing their Mande style construction, built Timbuktu. So Ninka and Mandinka and other Mande merchants made it into the popular city it is today. Manza Musa took it to the next level as he invested in the city greatly. By the time of the Songhai Empire, Timbuktu was well established as a place for scholarship. Timbuktu became so prominent that Leo Africanus wrote about it. There are many judges, doctors, and clerics here, all receiving good salaries from King Askia Muhammad of the state of Songhai. He pays great respect to men of learning. There is a great demand for books and more profit is made from the trade in books than from any other line of business. Wow, so yeah, man, there you have it. An eyewitness account attesting to the culture of learning in the West African kingdom of Songhai. Like the Africans in this region legitimately had a thirst for knowledge and they contributed to world scholarship at the time. Some of the greatest minds in the world came straight out of Timbuktu. So without further ado, let's get into the top five West African scholars of Timbuktu. Coming in at number five, we have Sidi Abu. Now, Sidi Abu, as we will call him today, was also known as Sheikh Al-Islam Abu Al-Barakat. He was a supreme judge of Timbuktu, Imam and the Dean of Sankori University. He's hailed as being firm, pious, humble, and modest. At number four, we have Araman. Now, Araman, as we will call him today, is believed to have been a Torah scholar at Timbuktu. He was hailed as a well learned professor possessing God's consciousness. Any man idolized as having, quote, God's consciousness must have been pretty intellectually savvy. Next at number three, we have Modibo Muhammad Al-Kaburi. Now, Modibo was a Fulani man and scholar. He was a jurist and judge. Modibo was fortunate to be a companion to many righteous scholars of the famed Sankori University. Modibo is very important to West African scholarship because he was a scholar that developed the curriculum of Sankori University, a curriculum that would shape the intellectual foundation for West Africans generations to come. He was also known for his pious and devotional character. Coming in at number two, we have the legendary Ahmed Baba. Ahmed Baba was descended from Umar Abin Muhammad Akit the Torek. He liked to be called Ahmed Baba the Black. Interestingly enough, his insistence on calling himself Ahmed Baba the Black seems to allude that he was well aware of the rivalry between North African Berbers and Africans further south. In other words, he was extraordinarily conscious. At an early age, he dedicated his time to learning until he surpassed all his peers and contemporaries. He was hailed as the matchless jurist. He was a scholar and imam of his time. His reputation spread all over Sub-Saharan Africa and North Africa. The jurist of Timbuktu sought his advice in matters pertaining to legal decisions. He was a storehouse of Islamic knowledge. He firmly stood on truth in the face of the Moroccans. He had a library of 1,600 manuscripts that was plundered during the Moroccan invasion of Timbuktu. He was deported to Fez in 1593. He authored 60 books, which is quite impressive for any time. And he was often called, and I quote, the standard of standards by the Moroccans. Ahmed Baba, throughout his life, wrote excellent books on theology, grammar, history, and jurisprudence, and he's recognized in Timbuktu today because of it. Finally, what you've all been waiting for, coming in at number one, the top scholar in all of Timbuktu was Mohammed Bagayogo. Dr. Bagayogo was the greatest scholar of Timbuktu. 
His ancestors were the Mande African scholars of the beloved city of Jene, which is further south of Timbuktu in modern-day Mali. He was the sheikh and professor of the legendary Ahmed Baba himself. Dr. Bagayogo was born in Timbuktu and he did all his studies in Timbuktu. He was one of the most eminent professors of both Sidi Yaya and Sankore universities. He was without a doubt a veritable doctor of Islamic sciences. This was confirmed when he stopped in Cairo on his way to Mecca. The scholars of Egypt conferred on him the title of doctor. He was a jurist well versed in all branches of Islamic knowledge. He had a very busy schedule and loved imparting knowledge to people with great patience. It's said that he would loan his books to his students and friends and would not ask for them back. He was sincere in his intentions and actions. More importantly, he loved people and people loved him. He was given the position of the Supreme Judge of Timbuktu which he kindly declined for fear of being unjust toward people. He lectured in all the universities of the city. He wrote his own personal copies of the Quran, which are today with his descendant, Baba Mahmud Hasi, the actual Imam of Sidi Yahya. He possessed absolute mastery in the areas of jurisprudence, grammar, prophetic traditions, logic, and much more. Dr. Bagayogo imparted knowledge to his students and he was also not afraid to receive knowledge from them. He was humble, a humble master of knowledge and accepted truth in whatever form it came. Danielle, it's Barbara J. Faison of the Why Struggle Podcast, your playbook buddy. I listened to your segment on setting intentions and thought it was excellent and wanted to just say, keep up the great work. And I love the practicality plus effectiveness because I'm a practical girl. So that really speaks to me. And you're absolutely right. You have to set those goals and those intentions that are practical and effective because otherwise it just really won't be sustainable. And so I really appreciate you sharing that because it's always great to hear people's perspectives and how they do things because you can always learn something. And so thank you for sharing and having your voice out on Anchor. And I'm so glad that we found each other and connected. Be well, my friend, and stay healthy and don't struggle. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. The podcast you just heard was recorded with Anchor. If you want to make your own, download the Android or iOS app completely free from anchor.fm slash podcast. That's anchor.fm slash podcast.